Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Demons to Diamonds, which was a 1982 release for the Atari 2600 by Atari, programmed by Nick Turner, who had previously brought Super Breakout to the Atari 2600, as you'll see a little bit down the line. So the game is a fairly simple fixed shooter for one or two players with a few interesting twists. So most notably there's a colour matching mechanic, so you have to shoot things that are the same colour as your gun. And rather than firing bullets you fire a variable length laser beam, uh, which puts an interesting twist on. It's also paddle controlled as well, which again gives it a slightly different feel from a lot of other fixed shooters at the time. The game's also got some fun simultaneous two-player modes where you sit on opposite sides of the screen and shoot things in the middle according to your colour. And there's even a mode where you can shoot each other as well. Um, and as you can probably imagine, that mode tends to be over quite quickly. We'll be focusing on the single-player mode today though. So, let's go play Demons to Diamonds. Okay, here we are once again with Atari Flashback Classics. And today's job is Demons to Diamonds. Let's have a look at the manual. Dodgy, dodgy quality scan again, as usual. Right. Note. Although Demons to Diamonds TM was primarily designed for children in the 6 to 12 age range, we find that people of all ages enjoy this engaging game. That's nice. All right. Here's the story, such as it is. You and your best friend are spending a super Saturday at the Cosmic Carnival. So far, you've done all the usual things. Now you're restlessly looking around for a new thrill, something exciting and different, some competitive skill sport. Suddenly, you hear a taunting voice coming from the vicinity of the target skill gallery. Whoa, let's see what that's all about, you say as you make a sharp left and jog off in the direction of the high-pitched speech. The non-stop voice belongs to a squat, two-foot-tall demon parading back and forth in front of a huge vertical shooting range. Hey you! Squeaks the demon, pointing directly at you. Would you like to command a laser base? Like to hit targets and score points? Are you looking for fun and excitement? A game in which you must dodge danger? We are the demons and we dare you to try your laser sharp shooting skills on us. We're full of surprises. We sidestep all over the shooting range. We yak at you until you shut us up. We change into new target forms, precious diamonds or deadly skulls. Hit a diamond and you'll score a small fortune in bonus points, but beware of skulls. So come on, reach for your laser, exercise your trigger finger on us. Put us through our paces and we'll dazzle you with demonic tricks. So, your objective in Demons to Diamonds is to score as many points as possible while losing as few lives as possible. You start the game with five lives, four of your lives are displayed on your side of the screen in the far right corner. They look like white rectangles. So, this is a paddle controlled game. Um, which makes it feel a little bit like um, Astro Blast. So you can sort of move back and forth very quickly. And so the, the basic mechanics of this are you have to hit demons that the same colour as your laser base to score points. Um, and it will turn into a diamond. And if you shoot the diamond, that gives you bonus points. If you hit a demon of your opponent's colour, it transforms into a skull that shoots in both directions. Watch out for these skulls. You lose a life every time you're struck by a skull's bullet. In some game variations, you also lose a life when your laser base is hit by your opponent. So we're only going to be playing single player today. But yeah, this this is designed to be played as a two player game. So if we look at the variations. Demons to Diamonds contains six game variations. Games 1 through 3 are standard versions, while games 4 through 6 are easier versions suitable for beginners. So game 1 is one player. Uh, so the skulls fire bullets at normal speed, shoot often and move quickly up and down the screen. Game 2 is the two player version of game 1. And game 3 uh, is the version where you can shoot each other. So that doesn't last quite so long. Game 4 is an easy one player game in which the skulls fire more slowly than his standard games don't fire as often and take longer to move up and down the screen. And then 5 and 6 are the two player variations. So... Each time you hit a demon of your own colour, you receive 1 to 8 points depending on which road the demon occupies. The demon in the row nearest your laser base is worth 1 point, while the demon in the third row is worth 3 points. Uh, diamonds are worth 10 to 80 points, or 10 times the value of the row it occupies. So, all pretty straightforward. Um, and that's about it. So, let's play. Alright, one player, fast skulls. Off we go. So here's our laser base down here. We are red. So we need to shoot the red things. And try and nab those diamonds and try not to shoot the pink things and 
and watch out for those skulls, of course, as well. Oh! Hit! <coughs> That's a level clear, I guess. But you see the panel controls in this LA to respond incredibly quickly to threats and potential targets. <coughs> but, you know, it's not always enough to save you. So probably the most interesting thing about this game is the fact that you, you fire this laser beam rather than a bullet. And so it fires up the screen for as long as you press the fire button. So in order to hit things, it's not just a case of tapping the button randomly. You've got to sort of actually... you basically... it's more like extending out an appendage rather than... rather than shooting things. Let's try again. And so that means you can you can sort of sweep back and forth as well. Oops. That was unfortunate. Oh no, I've made a mess of that, haven't I? Stop shooting the pink ones. Clear the middle out. So yeah, in the in the two play mode, you face off um, on opposite sides of the screen. You're shooting across the screen towards each other, um, and you you can nick each other's diamonds because the diamonds aren't color coded like the demons are. You can nick each other's diamonds, and so that's a sort of a key part of the strategy of the game. trying to position skulls in a position that are awkward for your opponent so you can deliberately summon skulls that are close to your opponent because that would be difficult for them to dodge the shots and then trying to take the diamonds that they create in order to score some points It's a shame that this doesn't have a sort of fake two-player mode like um, things like Air Sea Battle do. Because the Air Sea Battle's approach, which is just to have the computer-controlled opponent just moving back and forth dumbly and firing every couple of seconds, that would probably work fine with this game. So that, that would have been... oops! That would have been a nice variation on the, uh, on the standard format. Alright, um... Let's have a look at the easy mode just to compare. So you see the main difference here is that the skulls shoot much more slowly, so it's much easier to dodge their shots. And they don't shoot as often either. Yeah, this is much, much easier. And not nearly as interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not sure generally how well this was received, because the, the the only review I could find quoted was on the game's Wikipedia page, which was, uh, someone said it was basically a digital sleeping pill. Um, which I assume is not terribly complimentary. <laughs> and I mean, it's not a super complex game or anything like that, but... It does some interesting things. And it's got some different mechanics from what you'd typically expect from the fixed shooter genre. I think the main issue it would end up having over time is that there's just not a lot of variety to it.
Oh, we are starting to get the skulls moving now, though. That makes things a little bit more interesting. And they block your shots, so if you have too many skulls on the screen, you're not going to be able to actually hit the high-value targets because the skulls will be in the way. Remember, you get more points for the targets that are further away from you. But yeah, this easy mode is much too easy. Let's switch back to the regular one. The one player fast skulls. Here we go. Let's see if we can do it a little bit better this time. I find it quite interesting that this was marketed towards quite young children because oops not because it's too complex for them or anything but be because of the use of demons as a sort of thematic thing like if you think about sort of the the, the panic that there was over stuff like Dungeons and Dragons and things like that that would have been going on around the same time as this And that was a whole sort of think of the children panic. But I haven't seen any mention of any sort of controversy like that over this game, which is kind of surprising. Um, bearing in mind some of the other things that were going on at the time, but I mean, I guess that's something to be pleased about rather than disappointed by, but yeah, it is, it is just a little surprising. Oops. I've grown to quite like the pedal controls in this uh, compilation, so they do take a lot of getting used to, and any time that I'm playing these games with friends, I always have to explain the best way to use the pedal controls in this, which, if you've not seen any of my previous videos on games that include pedal controls, my best suggestion is um, almost to imagine that the analog stick on your controller is a paddle. Uh, which is like a sort of dial controller if you've never come across one before. And the way you do that is rather than just moving left to right and trying to control it that way, which is a surefire way to moving much too hard and sort of thinking the controls are much too sensitive, is just sort of move around the perimeter of the, um, the frame that the analog stick is mounted in. And that makes it much easier to control more precisely. And it feels very much like how the original panel controls would have felt as well, because it's it's like turning a dial by small increments. I mean, again, it's not quite the same as the original thing, and it does put a bit of a strain on your thumb after a while. But it does work. It does work. And it's probably the closest approximation we're going to get to paddle controls in a modern version of these games. Right, let's have one more go at this. Because otherwise we're sort of pretty much exhausting the possibilities it has to offer, really. Because there's, there's, as you can see, there's not a lot to this game. But it has some value. And like I say, it's, it is fun in two-player mode. I, I have played this in two-player mode in the past. And it is good fun. I would probably recommend not playing the version where you can shoot each other, though, because that just ends up being a contest of who can shoot each other first rather than who can score the most points. And that means those matches tend to be over very quickly, and they're not that fun. Whereas if you make it a competition for score, it's much more interesting. And so it's good that they provided the option to turn off that mode. 
I'm going to call it friendly fire, but it's it's not really friendly, is it, if you're competing against someone else? I guess you could look at it as the, the pair of you cooperating against the demons and trying to provide the biggest contribution or something. Oops! Over a thousand points. I think that's progress from where we started, at least. Certainly, certainly on this harder variant. Yeah, we're onto the moving skulls now. So we we're now as far as we got on the easy mode. And on to our last life. Well, it doesn't actually get pretty intense when there's a lot of skulls on the screen. Oh no! That's it. It's all over. Well, that's Demons to Diamonds. That's, like I say, that's pretty much everything that game has to offer. But uh, it's worth a try. It's worth a look some enemies there we didn't see before i wonder if they show up in later levels maybe that wasn't everything the game had to offer but that's as far as i can get anyway so just remains for me to say as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects moegamer.net where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today and videopackgames.wordpress.com which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 video pack computer also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.